Welcome back to our series on cognitive biases, which are things that your brain does that you don't want it to do, but that it does anyway because you're human. You can thank your ancestors for that. This is part nine of our series, and if you'd like to see the other parts, good luck searching for them in our archives. But today, the cognitive bias that we're gonna talk about is the gambler's fallacy. And we're gonna use this MacroOps article to help us, which I'll link to in the comments if you wanna read it all by yourself. <laughs> Why read it by yourself when you could read it with me? So the gambler's fallacy is basically the opposite of what we talked about in the last video, which is recency bias. So recency bias was thinking that what happened in the past will continue to happen, regardless of the probability. So it's like you get five heads in a row when you're flipping a coin and you think heads is gonna keep happening, when that's not true. It's a 50-50 chance every time you flip the coin. Gambler's fallacy is the opposite. This fallacy, also called the Monte Carlo fallacy, if you wanna be fancy, is when you think because something happens so often in the past that there's a lower chance of it happening in the future. So in this case, if you flip heads five times in a row, instead of thinking it's going to be heads again, like in recency bias, with the gambler's fallacy, you're going to think it's going to be tails. Because you got heads five times in a row, right? No way this sixth time is going to be heads too. But nope, if you thought that, you'd be wrong. Because the probability of you getting heads or tails on that sixth flip is once again 50%. Because over a long enough trial period with enough flipping of the coins, you're going to see that it evens out. But over any shorter stretch of time, yeah, maybe you'll get a bunch of heads and a bunch of tails in a row but that still doesn't affect what the next coin flip is going to be. And the reason why they call this the Monte Carlo fallacy is because the Monte Carlo simulation is basically running a bunch of scenarios through an equation. And you run so many that you see the long-term probabilities. So you could run millions and millions of coin flips through this system and you'll see over the long run it's basically 50-50. So the buy the dip example that we used in the last video works for this too. So after the market crash in 2008, the central bank stepped in and they've been pumping up markets ever since all their quantitative easing, just shoveling money into the markets, having the markets go higher and higher and higher. Well, there were a lot of fund managers that just couldn't wrap their head around that. They couldn't fathom the market continuously going up year after year. They constantly thought at this point, it has to fail. Like it has to turn around. So they kept shorting and shorting and shorting again. And every time they try to short, they would get blown out. Because as Stan Druckenmiller has taught us, you should never go against central banks. If they're pumping up the economy, yeah, the stock market is gonna sore. But they fell for that gambler's fallacy. They thought because, okay, the business cycle should only be five to seven years, we're 10 years into this thing, it has to collapse now. That's a fallacy. Just because you've gotten the same result for 10 years doesn't mean the 11th year that it's gonna collapse. Sure, long term, when you look back, you're gonna see the cycle for what it was, and you know markets will always go like this. But over any short term period of time, even if few decades, you might get long, long stretches that are going to confuse you. But you got to remember not to fall for something like this fallacy. And as Keynes once said, the market can stay irrational longer than you can stay solvent. So true. Even if the trend doesn't make sense, it could keep going. You don't want to be caught on the wrong side of it. Now, this isn't just a fallacy that happens to professional hedge fund managers trying to short the market. This happens to anyone trying to execute a strategy. Let me show you an example. So one of the stocks that has made me a lot of money is Illumina. You can see how nice this trend is. Yeah, it's kind of falling apart now, but, but let me show you an example of what happened to me and how I almost fell victim to this gambler fallacy. So back in the summer of last year, this thing was on fire. And on July 3rd, which is right here, I got into a call option, which by July July 12th, which is right here, I sold it. And in just those few days, I doubled my money. It was a fantastic trade. And that trade was based off the NASDAQ All-Stars trading system that I use. It was the options version. So the trading system is all automated. It tells me what trades to take based off all the data and research and back testing that was done to put it together. So this first trade was easy. It said buy these call options in Illumina and then sell here. You get alerts and everything. So awesome. Double my money in a few days. Felt great. But then just a few weeks later, on August 2nd, the thing triggered again. So the system told me to once again buy options on the same stock that I was just in, that I just made 100% in, and do the whole process once again. So the first thing I obviously was thinking was no way. There is no way I'm about to hit this thing twice in a row, especially in the time period so close to each other. Now, did I have any basis or reasoning for that assumption? No, not really. All I had was the gambler's fallacy working against me because I didn't think what just happened could happen again. But I knew 
knew that I should stick to my system, regardless of what my emotional state or cognitive biases are telling me. And I did. So I struck up that call option on the second and held on. And the thing somehow just kept going. And again, by the 28th right here, I had doubled my money in that option. And that's where we sold. So yeah, it took a little longer than the first time, but it literally happened again. And I was so surprised. Should I actually be surprised objectively? No. Well, you know, your emotions aren't objective. You're going to feel what you're going to feel. Just like no matter what you do, you're going to feel things like recency bias and the gambler's fallacy. But the way you can get around that is just by sticking to your plan. Turn off all those thoughts and just stick to what you already had in place beforehand. That's the whole point of a plan. And if you want more tips and tricks on how to control your emotions, then definitely check out this FOMO trading guide I put together. There should be a link either in this video or down below where you can go to a page, enter your email, and I will send this to you for free. And it has a bunch of tips and tricks that I use to control feelings like FOMO, fear, greed, all those things. So definitely sign up for this guide and I can send it your way. Now, if you like this video and you want to continue following this series, which may never end, who knows? Just subscribe to this channel and hit that bell for a notification email when the next video comes out. We're published every single day and I wouldn't want you to miss a single video so subscribe and I will see you in the next one and in the meantime stay fallible out there bye